Thank okay. you, thank you, Paolo, for the nice introduction. Good morning, everyone. Well, few of us. Uh, I think it's because of the yesterday dinner. Uh, so um, I'm presenting the, the first results that uh, my uh, colleague Vicenza Di Pietra and I uh, obtained for uh, the creation of uh, uh, a simple neural network for uh, the correction of the distortion derived from the photogrammetric reconstruction of river bottoms. But let's try to contextualize a little bit this work. So, uh, bathymetry through the measure of the depth uh, of uh, waters in land and ocean uh, is a variable that is crucial and very important for uh, the hydraulic modeling and for the study of river processing. So uh, it can be measured with several methods, uh, the traditional one like topographic survey with uh, total station and reflectors, but also dual frequency receiver like the one that uh, we can see in the uh, first image. Uh, we can use uh, other methods like profilometers that are based on uh, Doppler measurements. Uh, they are a little bit more faster than uh, traditional methods. Uh, they work in uh, cross-section along rivers, exactly like uh, topographic surveys, uh, a little bit more expensive but uh, faster. Um, then we can use uh, new technology like uh, green leaders. Uh, I didn't put it in the picture, but uh, we can also have uh, uh, echo sounders that instead of working on cross sections so or on uh, uh, measure realized point by point, uh, they um, acquire information in uh, a, um, a matrix way. So uh, the final output is uh, 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 a raster to be uh, to simplify it. Uh, so. Um, the real problem in uh, the reconstruction of the, the bottom from uh, a photogrammetric uh, um, application is connected to uh, the refraction of the light that, um, in, uh, in the atmosphere and in the water because uh, um, the light has a, a different reflection angle in these two means and the passage the, of the light within the interface uh, between uh, um, the air, the atmosphere and the water uh, cause uh, uh, a different Okay, yeah, I have a pointer, good. Because um, uh, uh, the structure for motion procedure to underestimate usually the point, because uh, uh, as you can see, theta 1 and theta 2 uh, are uh, um, different and defined by the means, so water and, and the air. As you can see here, uh, this uh, system can be solved quite easily if you know the two angles and the water surface position. And uh, well, to solve this system uh, in photogrammetric world, uh, several methods have been uh, developed. Uh, they, we can call them photogrammetric or geometrical methods. Uh, they are uh, uh, well performing, interesting, but unfortunately they require a lot of time, a lot of information, starting from the parameters uh, of the camera, the position of the cameras, uh, the water surface, uh, um, position and uh, quotes. Uh, so, uh, in time, other type of approach have been developed that are usually based on the spectral response of uh, ortho, um, ortho mosaic and orthophoto. So, uh, instead of being in a physical system, we, uh, we work now in, a, well, always a physical system, but uh, it's uh, based on optical information. So, through optical remote sensing, I've been uh, developed uh, uh, different uh, methods and uh, techniques to correct uh, the, uh, to estimate, sorry, the depth of the, of the bottom covered by water. Um, such methods are usually uh, developed uh, for uh, um, big rivers, lakes, uh, and ocean. Uh, some of them rely on uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, most of them uh, are based on random forest and uh, starting from uh, uh, 2000. Uh, also methods based on neural network uh, are available. But most of them, uh, as I said, are uh, created for oceans, sea, and lakes that have a very, um, let's say, um, simple uh, structure in terms of bottom respect to alpine rivers. Um, so uh, 
one we first time were in the situation of uh, uh, measure and estimate the bathymetry of uh, uh, an environment like this one, which I all the methods that I briefly recap you uh, in the, the previous slides, uh, and realize that, that we're not so well performing. So uh, we, uh, uh, my colleagues and I ask ourselves, what can we do? Uh, we try uh, with uh, traditional topography, but uh, it was very time consuming. And so uh, we, uh, we thought that uh, we can create uh, an artificial neural network, a very small model that can uh, be trained uh, using data that we already collected in uh, all these uh, alpine uh, rivers in order to estimate the bathymetry. Um, so, what we did was uh, um, test the effectiveness of uh, uh, empirical radiometric methods through a uh, deep learning uh, model uh, to correct the, um, the underestimation of uh, the bottom elevation derived from uh, the structure for motion methodology. Uh, we, as I said, decided to focus only on uh, small water courses with uh, less than one meter depth uh, that are ba mainly based in the uh, alpine region of uh, um, Piedmont in northwest Italy. Okay, here you, we have very short uh, workflow. First, uh, all the part of uh, data collection in which we realize a drone survey. Uh, using uh, a multi-rotor system, different sensor, different system. This doesn't matter uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, analysis and uh, quality of data for the, the model. Uh, then we collect uh, information uh, of, uh, um, of the depth uh, and also of the, the, the bottom of the river using uh, dual frequency GNSS receivers and profilometers. Uh, the data set was then generated through a standard structure for motion procedure uh, and uh, the, um, the depth uh, was uh, calculated as a difference between the water surface, the WS that I showed you before, and the real quote that uh, were measured to uh, GNSS and the, the profilometers. Uh, then we prepare some extra feature in order to improve the, um, the performances of the, of the network. Uh, we selected uh, different uh, features that are basically uh, derived from uh, the radiometric response of our data. Uh, all data were scaled and divided into training data set, test data set, and a part of it, uh, an entire case study was used as unseen data set in order to check uh, the ability of the, our net to generalize. Um, we define the regressor network, uh, perform a permutation analysis in order to uh, check the importance of each, the input fit within the, the network, uh, and then uh, perform the validation on the test and the validation on the unseen data set. Our data were collected in uh, three different uh, uh, areas. So they, are, they have in common of um, being uh, alpine streams, uh, and uh, they have paddles um, uh, as the bottom with the granitic rocks. Uh, as you can see, we have a, a different number of observations. Um, that's mainly because uh, the data were collected with two different tools. So uh, GNSS in our ATK modality, real-time cinematic, and the profilometers also embedded with uh, uh, dual frequency receivers. Uh, for the first two, we have uh, uh, 100 and and 70 observation, while for Palice River, the last one, uh, we have uh, more than 600 observation, which are basically points. So each point uh, has uh, X, Y coordinates, uh, so longitude and, and latitude, and uh, uh, an elevation information uh, regarding the bottom. Here you have the profilometers, uh, as I said, um, has a uh, dual frequency uh, antenna embedded on it, and uh, we are able to uh, determine the, um, the elevation of the, of the points uh, in the bottom of the river, knowing the lever arm and the sinking of the, uh, of the vessel too. 
uh, as I said, we use two different cameras for the, the data collection. Uh, uh, both uh, are embedded on uh, DJI drone system. Our uh, RGB cameras, we also have information regarding the infrared spectrum for uh, two of the case studies, but uh, for this specific work, we only focus on the, the visible part. Um, so very shortly, the um, errors and the accuracy that we got from the uh, structure for motion reconstruction, uh, we are around uh, two centimeters and one centimeters uh, and half uh, of error on the um, on the reconstruction in the three areas and resolution of the auto mosaic and the digital surfing model of uh, one centimeters to, to four centimeters. Oh, uh, this is the data collection with the profilometer. As you can see, as I said, it is fast, but not so fast because uh, not having uh, an engine, it needs to be moved from uh, one bank to uh, the other one really, really calmly in order to not move too much the water and, uh, and create an error in the data acquisition. Okay, so um, how we measure the, um, the depth? We basically um, subtract the information of the water surface, surface uh, to the uh, elevation of the, the points measured on the bottom. Um, the water surface has been calculated in two different ways according to the tool that we used for the data collection. So for the uh, GNSS uh, with pole acquisition, we measure them manually along the uh, interface between water and the, the river bank, while for the profilometer, we used the, uh, the quote measured by the GNSS antenna uh, to which we uh, subtract the, the value of the uh, lever arm, the sink, and the depth measure realized by the, the vessel itself. We then computed all the uh, band rushes that you can see here in, uh, uh, on the right of the slide and scaled them using uh, um, uh, uh, library, uh, sorry, Shikit algorithm, the minimum max scalar, and uh, all the data set from uh, the Riparia, the one with 120 observation, was used as an uh, unseen data set or virgin data set. Um, here there is the structure of the net, it's uh, um, quite uh, uh, simple, uh, it's uh, a regressor, so we have the dependent variable, our depth, and the independent variable, all the remaining, including the, uh, the depth uh, with the BS caused by the, the photogrammetric reconstruction, everything was uh, um, written in, uh, in, uh, in Python using Keras and TensorFlow as a backhand. Uh, it is composed by uh, three layer uh, using two different activation functions uh, and the weight optimizer that we decided to use is the atom. Uh, the last function was measured on the um, mean absolute error and everything was trained in 100 epochs. Um, so, uh, as I said before, we computed also um, uh, an importance value for all the variables that we inserted uh, in the net. Uh, the importance was uh, calculated with a permutation analysis that uh, basically uh, take care, um, consider the accuracy uh, improvement or uh, decrease uh, for uh, each of uh, the, the variable by training the, um, the model different time every time without a variable. Um, the most important uh, feature were the, the ratio between red and blue and the NDTR that is the normalized stability index. Uh, and then, um, here I show you some result. The um, network performed uh, uh, quite well. The uh, loss function uh, converged uh, very quick, as you can see. We have uh, error square of uh, 68, 0 0.68 on the test and uh, 0 0.74 on the, the training. Um, this is mainly due I think to the uh, bad generalization ability of the network for uh, very um, you know, not, 
swallow waters. Uh, so here uh, you can see the, the ratio between the real depth and the predicted one. Uh, all the values are scaled. Uh, so in this case, we're not talking about centimeters is, uh, or anything. Um, as you can see, everything is uh, under 0 0.5 as a uh, much more dispersed, while for uh, deeper water, the, the performance is uh, uh, much better. Um, we can see a similar trend also in the ANSIN uh, dataset. Indeed, uh, the uh, observation that uh, you have here, observation uh, 65 and uh, around 90 uh, are much more high in respect to the, the real data. Uh, so the trend is uh, kind of well predicted, but still there are some um, outlier. In this case, on, on the unseen data set, we have a uh, RMSE of, uh, of 10 centimeters and uh, um, uh, a mean absolute error of uh, 8 centimeters. So um, these values are uh, uh, acceptable for the type of work that, that uh, uh, we are realizing on the one hand because uh, the, the, they are in line with uh, RTK measures that have uh, accuracy and precision around the three centimeters, more or less, and uh, also because uh, the nature of the, um, the, the environment that uh, we, we survey and we measure. Uh, as you can see, uh, most of the paddles that we have uh, in the river bottom are more or less than centimeters, so uh, obtaining procedure uh, or accuracy um, greater, uh, sorry, smaller than this, um, are, uh, uh, have low meaning, small meaning. Uh, we see that uh, uh, the um, performance of the network is improved, is better in uh, um, depth. Uh, uh, there are uh, in, uh, in high depth, but uh, we believe that uh, this is due to uh, the dimension of the rock in the bottom, the type of sediment, uh, also the presence of, uh, of vegetation. Um, we, we believe that uh, uh, the performances of, uh, of the net can be improved uh, if we add more observation, because uh, the demand gap is that we have a 500 observation for uh, an aerial network that uh, even if it's a regressor, they are uh, still not enough. But uh, um, this is only the, the beginning. We actually already add uh, two more survey and two more data set to our net and uh, from the first results we already see some improvements. Uh, so for the future, we, we would like, of course, to enlarge uh, our data set uh, and try to investigate a little bit more on some aspects. So for, first of all, understanding uh, why in the, in the ranking of importance of the feature, the photogrammetric depth, so uh, the um, the depth of the water estimated to, uh, to a structure for motion um, is not so important. We expected it to be uh, linear, uh, linearly uh, correlated to the, um, to the real depth, so the corrected one. This wasn't true, uh, maybe because uh, uh, the permutation method is not the best one to, to check uh, the importance uh, of the feature between uh, a regression, or, or maybe it's because of uh, the, um, the scaling uh, method, which uh, has well known being um, very, um, very influent on, on the result of, uh, of the model. Um, some others, uh, uh, consideration on tests that we would like to do is the method for methodology for um, the measurement of the water surface, which uh, we believe is uh, still very critical, uh, specifically uh, for the GNSS measure relies on the pool because uh, it, depend on, it depends on the user and the accuracy of the measure itself. Uh, so uh, these are only the, the first step, uh, and we hope to be to be able to uh, increase the the net very soon and um, uh, add much more uh, observation that for now are concentrated on the alpine arch, uh, but uh, who knows, maybe in the future we can uh, add uh, also uh, other type of uh, environment, on fluvial environment. 
So thank you very much for the attention. Um, if you have questions, I'm here. Thank you. Okay, so I see that there uh, are no, uh, so first of all, thank you for your presentation. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit sleepy this morning, as <laughs> I believe uh, most of us. Um, okay, so uh, I see that there are no questions on venues less, but I don't know if the people here on the floor, they have questions or curiosity about uh, this presentation. Oh, I see that there are, Oh, so, ah, there is one person. You have to go there where there is the microphone, please. Yeah. Hello? I believe that is working. It's Hello? already working. Can, can you, ah, right now it yes, is. Yes, can I hear you? Okay, good morning. I'm also very sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> pardon me. So, yeah, Ellen, a nice presentation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm wondering something. You have a relatively uh, short set of observations and you went for the, the neural networks. I'm wondering, did you consider regression trees? Because you can do very similar exercises with regression trees. And what are your thoughts about it? And why did you opt for this way? OK, thank you very much for uh, this question. Uh, yes, we definitely consider also uh, regressor trees. And actually, all the, the, the model uh, that, that you see, all the data, were used uh, to compare different methodology. One of them were the, the regressor theory, the uh, standard linear regression with multi-parametric regressions, and also artificial neural network. We decided to go for uh, um, a neural network because of, um, well, the idea is to add much more data, and uh, we believe that somehow it's better uh, able to generalize. Indeed, from the, the first result that we obtained from the comparison, the regressor tree performed very well. Uh, we have a, a good uh, uh, score in terms of uh, errors, but then when we apply it to an unseen data set, as we did with the artificial neural network, we have immediately a little bit more um, uh, higher uh, error. We're actually writing a uh, um, uh, paper journal, uh, paper for a journal about this. So well, you will see the results soon. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, and I see that there is a question also now, um, which is uh, you flow from 40 over 50 to 88 meter above surface. What uh, if you flew uh, with a surface uh, hugging drone and could be, for, for example, five meters above the water rock surface? Would that improve or worsen the precision? Okay, thank you for the interesting question. Well, uh, we flew very, uh, it's relatively low uh, flew as uh, the uh, as they say, uh, 40, 80 meters. And this was because we had a uh, uh, dimension of the pixel uh, around uh, uh, one or two centimeters. That is what was required. Of course, if we had uh, fly higher, uh, we would have a, pixel, a larger pixel. So the, the spectral response of each of them would have been not so specific to each pillar or rock, and for sure something would have changed. So it would be interesting, actually, uh, try to run the same test and develop the, the model also with uh, the, the same data set, but maybe um, with a, a, a lower resolution in terms of uh, uh, pixel dimension. Um, so that's it. Okay. I hope I answer. If OK, thank you. And uh, is there another question? No, I uh, no. So I believe at this point that we can close here. So thank you again thank for you your everybody. presentation.